What if I told you there was an ancient mystery, an ancient story once again being replayed in modern times? Who do you think you are? The Honest Trailers guy? We are all familiar with the story of the Tower of Babel, a story of a pagan world coming together as a single unit, an entire society trying to achieve equality with God. And what was their method? To literally build a tower that would ascend into heaven, that would ascend into the realm of celestial beings. Flawless plan. The craziest thought is that the very thing they were trying to do would have been achieved if God hadn't intervened. Uh, we've been to the sky. There's no God there. And good thing he did. God destroyed the tower and cast confusion into the people. And all that evidence to suggest different theories for how language developed is just there to test your faith. What a crazy thing to say that they would have achieved their goal. But I didn't say it. God did. In Genesis chapter 11, it says this. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. And the Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Okay, gotcha. So to eliminate poverty in the third world, all we gotta do is teach them English. Cool. Also, what's up with this music? Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. The Lord, Jehovah, the God of the universe, said nothing would be impossible for them. This indicates that the very thing they had set out to do, to build a tower into heaven, would have been achieved. How? This seems impossible. How would a people group build a tower that would reach to the outer realms of the universe, thousands of light years away, into a place that we call heaven? Okay, can you find any evidence whatsoever in the Bible to suggest that heaven is supposed to be thousands of light years away? Or was it perhaps written by a primitive people who couldn't even conceive of such a distance? This is ridiculous. Yep. And impossible. You're on a roll. Therefore, I would suggest another means of extending their tower into heaven. I'm listening. You see, many Christian intellects with doctorate degrees in theology and even molecular and particle physics would suggest that there are gateways, or for you sci-fi junkies, portals, just beyond the naked eye, placed at strategic locations around the world in which the celestial realm would enter and leave from. Anybody can suggest anything, but does it even qualify as ludicrous is the question. Let me give you another example. Whenever you're in a time of need and you pray, Lord, send down your angels, let them protect me. Where's the angel or the angels coming from? From the outer edges of the universe or wherever the spirit realm lies? If he was traveling at the speed of light, it would literally take that angel millions of years to get to you. You're long gone. Once again, what a ridiculous thought. Hey, you said it, not me. Wouldn't it make more sense if these spirit beings were simply able to pass through some sort of dimensional barrier, through a, a gateway, to immediately be able to assist you? Is that what Jacob was seeing? Was he seeing one of the gateways into heaven in which angels were ascending and descending? The same type of gateway the pagans in the story of the Tower of Babel were trying to get to? It's interesting to note what Jacob said after his encounter there with the supernatural realm. Surely the Lord is in this place and I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. It's not door to heaven, it's Stargate. But Roland Emmerich movies aside, look at this guy's face. He's so satisfied with himself. And from studying history, you will quickly see that God, he works in cycles. 
He works in patterns. If you want to get on what God is doing, then you've got to find out how he operates. And Hebrew tells us that Jesus, God, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> so, what if I told you, again, today, the ancient story of the Tower of Babel is being repeated. Isn't it interesting that people from all around the world have once again come together to build the largest machine that man has ever constructed? They say it's for the purpose of discovering the God Particle. Don't call it the God Particle. It's got nothing to do with God. Its purpose is to allow particles in the standard model to be massive, while preserving gauge symmetry and the chirality of the weak interactions. Call it the Higgs boson instead. Leon Letterman, the guy who gave the name God Particle, originally wanted to call it the Goddamn Particle, but his editor had it changed. This mystery particle that essentially holds the entire universe together, and if found would explain our very existence. Only kind of. The Higgs boson gives mass to electrons, and if electrons were massless, atoms wouldn't exist. But it doesn't, quote-unquote, explain our very existence in this cosmic transcendental kind of way you seem to be thinking of. I think it's pretty interesting that I have made the discovery of a lifetime. I have figured out what the God Particle is. Too bad that Higgs and Glecht, Braut, Graunick, Hagen, and Kibble got you beat by more than 50 years. I have figured out what holds the entire universe together. And it talks about it in Colossians, chapter 1, verse 17. He, Jesus, is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Okay, I don't mean to be a dick, but where in the Bible was this written? This expression is called the Standard Model Lagrangian. It contains much of the relevant information about the Higgs mechanism. Well? This insane machine, it's called CERN. The machine is called the Large Hadron Collider. CERN is the name of the institution where it was built. The Tower of Babel. Shortest tower ever. The whole world came together to work on it. Over 100 nationalities have come together to work at CERN, the Large Hadron Collider. Thousands upon thousands of people, even mortal enemies of each other. Their governments are enemies. They are not. The people at the Tower of Babel's goal was to reach a portal or a gateway into the sky into another dimension where God dwells. Sergio Bertolucci, director for research and scientific computing at CERN, said this, The Large Hadron Collider could open a doorway to an extra dimension and out of this door might come something, or we might send something through it. I actually don't blame you for this. That was really poor phrasing right there. You see, when physicists talk about extra dimensions or multiple dimensions, they don't mean parallel universes. They mean spatial dimensions beyond the usual left-right, up-down, and front-back. These extra dimensions of space are predicted by certain speculative ideas like string theory. But there's a problem. We don't see any extra dimensions. So if they are, in fact, part of our reality, they must be hidden, inaccessible in some way. It could be that we're like the creatures in Flatland, and we're trapped in a sheet that's immersed in this multidimensional reality. But it could also be, and this is the possibility favored by string theory, that these dimensions, unlike the ones we know, are not infinite. They are curled up, and so tiny that we cannot perceive them, compactified, as they're called. Now the thing is, fundamental particles like electrons and photons aren't like little billiard balls. They have a wavelength, and if that wavelength can fit inside of the curled up extra dimension, they can explore it. In general, the smaller the wavelength, the higher the energy. So what that guy was saying was simply, maybe the LHC can produce particles which are energetic enough so that their wavelength is small enough that they can explore these extra dimensions and produce observable consequences. He was not talking about a literal portal to another dimension, 
and certainly not a portal to heaven. The Daily Mail recently had an article that read, Will the Large Hadron Collider find a parallel universe? No. The LHC won't do anything the cosmic rays haven't already done. Is all this a mere coincidence? Are the startling parallels between these two stories just a matter of chance? Or are the powers of the demonic realm actively at work right now? That. Definitely the powers of the demonic realm. And if this is more than just a coincidence, and history does decide to repeat itself, let's not forget how it ended for the people at the Tower of Babel, who were also trying to play God. Judgment came. Judgment came from the true and living God, the just and good God, the God that holds all things together, the God of the Bible. Judgment came and cast confusion into the people of all the earth. But what do I know? Never a truer word.